This is a production of Cornell University. Okay, hopefully all the handouts are being passed around. A little bit about myself. I um, uh, grew up here in, in the Cobusville area, not too far uh, from where we're at here in eastern New York. Small dairy farm. Um, and then started with FSA, which was actually Farmer's Home back then, while I was still at Cornell. Uh, and I've been there for the past 24 years. I was a loan officer out in the field working with um, ag producers up until about seven years ago when I uh, took the job in Syracuse to oversee uh, the 11 offices that we do have here in New York that provide um, credit to, to farmers. And um, the handout that's going around that lists the state, unfortunately it's not uh, in color, it's going to be on my slideshow, but we have 11 offices I tried to show on the, on the map which counties are covered by which office, so if someone's working with someone and you're trying to figure out which office to go to, uh, there's a colored, coded one of these in the PowerPoint, and the PowerPoints will be available uh, electronically, so hopefully you guys will get that. And then, the, uh, like I said, the list of the contacts, um, office names, addresses, phone numbers, um, again, to help make those connections. So we're going to start first talking about um, the agency and, whoops, this one? Okay, thanks. The Farm Service Agency, for those that may not know who we are, we're actually an agency within the United States Department of Agriculture. And the Farm Loan Program provides uh, credit to ag producers who are unable to obtain private or commercial credit. And we also um, place special emphasis on providing loans to beginning farmers. Uh, minority and women farmers and ranchers. If you're a farmer or rancher uh, that is unable to obtain credit from some other source and we're not to be in competition with commercial lenders or the Farm Credit Service, um, but you're looking to purchase a farm, sustain your farm, expand it, um, then FSA may be an option for financing. Uh, we have all different types of loans, which I'm going to uh, talk about uh, briefly, all the different loans that we do have, um, and any of our offices can handle those questions. Our loans basically fall into two categories, direct loans, where um, a producer would come to our office, uh, we would uh, assist you with the, the loan application, uh, processing it, we make the decision, we service the loan throughout its lifetime, um, and then the guaranteed loans, where the banks or farm credit and that just come to us and we would underwrite the loan um, would be on the guarantee side. The types of loans that we have, farm ownership would be for things like buying real estate, needing to uh, uh, do an improvement on there, drill a well, uh, build a barn. Uh, those would be farm ownership type loans. The operating loans would be for things like uh, purchase of livestock, seed fertilizer and spray, um, buying machinery equipment, and those ownership loans, or those, those operating loans, include micro loans and our rural use loan program. Those are kind of uh, types of loans within the operating loan um, category. And then the last one we have on the direct side are emergency loans, and those are um, designed to assist farmers that are trying to recover from a natural disaster, i.e. Hurricane Sandy uh, that hit last fall, or drought conditions that we faced um, last summer. Um, there has to be an emergency designation in the county, and then that opens up the, the possibility of funding for emergency loans. On the guarantee side, same type of stuff with farm ownership and, uh, and operating loans. On the guarantee side, we do have revolving lines of credit, where the bank or farm credit can make a, a line of credit, and they can advance on it for up to five years. Uh, it can actually have a seven-year term, so it, you could have it, uh, two years to pay back the final advance. And we have conservation loans on the guaranteed side, um, and basically any kind of conservation practice that NRCS would write into a conservation plan uh, can be uh, financed through a guaranteed conservation loan. The other thing that's fairly new, and we've not done any of these in New York, um, is uh, land, our land contract guarantee program, uh, whereby you've got a seller and a buyer. Um, the seller wants to hold a, a mortgage on the farm. They want to sell it on a contract. There's two different types of guarantees that we could use to assist uh, the possibility of financing it that way. 
the microloan program uh, was developed uh, with FSA to better serve the unique financial operating uh, needs of beginning niche and, and small family sized farms. Um, designed for smaller operations like specialty crop producers um, and operators with CSAs. And um, our whole mission is, is to help family farms and for microloans, it was kind of okay, this will help the smaller, the smaller scale operations. How do we define that? How small is small? How far down do we go? And um, a thousand dollars in gross sales kind of defines the small end of how, how small an operation we can finance. Give me an idea. This was um, uh, uh, a tool they had given us when microloans rolled out. This is a new program, just actually came into effect in January. Um, so I, I threw it in there, what they're saying about microloans down at the farm. I don't have any good stories, so, uh, or jokes, but. Um, one of the questions was asked about why, why microloans? Um, and USDA is continuing to focus on making sure that credit is available to American farmers and ranchers. Microloans are part of the USDA's uh, efforts here to streamline and modernize um, our resources. We administer it right through our oper as an operating loan, um, and again, designed to meet those credit needs of, of smaller farms. Um, a microloan simplifies and streamlines the process, and it's for loans up to 35,000. So if you need credit of 35,000 or less, or seed fertilizer spray, buying livestock, buying machinery equipment, Micro loan may may work for you, um, and the uh, the aim here is to um, offer more efficient processing times to get an answer quicker uh, for these smaller loans. Uh, they've added some flexibility to our eligibility requirements and reduced the amount of paperwork you have to provide us in the application process. Um, for a regular operating loan, when you get the uh, the cover letter from us that says, you know, here's uh, here's what we need for an operating loan application. The cover letter is two pages. It has a laundry list this big of the things you need to provide. Um, and so the idea of microloans was these were smaller loans. Um, and so we will require less paperwork, and hopefully the turnaround time will be better. According to the uh, 2007 census, and I know we're, um, another census has just been, is in the process of being completed here now, but 71% of the farm operations grow less than 25000 a year. Operators of these types of small farms were not typically served by ag lenders, and folks may have difficulty obtaining financing from commercial lenders. Since 2009, uh, USDA has made a record amount of farm loans through FSA, 128,000 loans that totaled nearly $18 billion. And we saw here in New York to kind of just bring this was information from our national office, kind of bring it down to uh, uh, the state level. I mean, the 2009 dairy crisis in New York uh, which rolled into 10 for us here. Our loan volume was like it was back in the days of the 80s uh, with the farm crisis. Um, and we saw a huge, tremendous uh, number of people walking in our door uh, looking looking for loans. USDA has uh, increased the number of loans to beginning farmers and ranchers from 11,000 that uh, were in 2008 to 15,000 in 2011. And I don't have the 2012 numbers, uh, year-end numbers yet. Uh, but more than 40% of our loans now go to beginning farmers, so certainly the push has been on for us to reach those folks, um, and to also increase our lending to socially disadvantaged producers, um, again, by about 50%. Uses of microloans, I've mentioned these are some of the things that you can do with a microloan. Um, startup expenses, seed fertilizer, pay land rent, marketing expenses, family living, livestock, make minor uh, farm improvements, need to drill a well, put in a cooler, hoop house, irrigation, buy a truck to deliver your produce. The application process, like I mentioned, um, less paperwork. The requirement for managerial experience um, and loan security are modified to accommodate smaller operations. Um, and beginning farmers that have um, limited or no farm management experience, but it, it lessens the, the requirement. So if you have management experience in um, uh, business that you were involved in and you're starting this farm operation, um, that, that may work, or you may be working with a mentor on a, an apprenticeship. You need to have some farm experience, but we're going to consider, like I say, all those other experiences that you have outside of agriculture um, with your application. And the opportunity to gain experience working with a mentor during that first production cycle. What do we take as security? Um, if it's an annual operating loan, 
going to be secured by a first lien on the, uh, the property or the product. Um, we have to have at least 100%. So if we're going to loan you 10,000, I need 10,000 of security. Ideally, I'd like to get up to you know 15,000 of security for a $10,000 loan. Um, but we can loan dollar for dollar at 100%. For, for micro loans that are made for uh, other purposes, like buying a piece of equipment um, or livestock, we would look to take a first lien on those items that we're going to purchase. Again, with that same 100% security that we're looking for. $35,000 maximum. Repayment term can vary depending upon what, your, what the purpose of your borrowing is, um, but uh, can be up to seven years. Annual operating loans, that would be, again, like seed, fertilizer, spray. We'd like to have those paid back within 12 months. The idea being a year from now, you're going to need financing again. You want last year's loan paid off. Um, interest rates. Uh, and I brought our current interest rate. Uh, our interest rates change once a month, and for March, it's a 1.25% fit. The idea of the micro loan was to, you know, start the, the smaller beginning farmer, um, and then uh, as as your operation grows or your financing needs uh, and increase, then you would apply for a regular operating loan with us. Probably have to give us a little bit more paperwork. Um, and then eventually graduate to commercial commercial credit. That's the whole idea of our loan program. Kind of an apple versus oranges. They did a little uh, uh, comparison of our, our regular OL program with the micro loan. I've hit on all that uh, in the slides prior. And then the uh, one handout I do want to um, refer you to. It's a uh, it's pretty. There's a farm loan chart, and what I've passed out. This is basically all of our loan programs on one sheet of paper. Um, the, the type might be a little small there, but um, it, it does list all the loan types on one sheet of paper, so I think it's a good reference material, especially for uh, you folks that work with uh, beginning farmers, uh, so that you have it all on at your fingertips. And it lists the direct loans um, and the guaranteed loans on here. The one thing that is not listed, and I did give you the second fact sheet, was the really youth loan. We also do loans of up to $5,000 um, for students that live in rural areas, and that's defined as uh, populations of 50,000 or fewer. But it could be a student who's involved in 4-H or FSA looking to do some kind of an agricultural supervised project, uh, and we can provide some financing to that youth uh, to kind of get them started, assist them with, uh, you know, how do you keep a balance sheet? How do you keep a checkbook? Um, how do you put together a business plan? That's the whole idea of that. Give them some experience in production and also teach them some financial uh, management skills along the way. So those two handouts really are all of the loan programs that we have. And um, here's the interest rates that we, that we talked about. They all, our interest rates are online. I'll show you quickly where you can find some of this stuff. Farm ownership, our real estate money is three and a quarter. And again, that's fixed. Okay, and I've just given you some instructions. I'll actually show you when you go to our website because it might be, uh, I want to show you how the resources available on there, but that's our, our agency's website, kind of walk you through how to do it. There's a plain language guide that's on there, um, which is, is very useful. Also, if someone, you know, what does it take? I want to I want to apply for a loan. What do I need to get together? How does the process work? Um, that plain language guide kind of walks you from A to Z. Um, there's also information on all these specific loan types that are on that loan chart. You can dig down further to see what the eligibility requirements are um, and all of that. And all of our application forms also can be obtained electronically. The one other thing would be um, Gov Delivery. For any of you um, who would be interested in getting email updates from FSA, and this is not just in New York, this is nationwide, there is a, um, an electronic news service. Um, you can go on our website and sign up for Gov Delivery. And when something comes out, like the microloan program that got announced in January, they'll send you out a quick email, hey, this is happening, or hey, there's a, you know, a date to uh, date coming up to sign up for whatever. Um, you'll get some of those, uh, those news feeds free there, and then you can subscribe right on our website. That's the colored chart uh, showing you our credit uh, sites and our farm loan teams. So when you, if you go on our website, which is uh, www.fsa.usda.gov, um, this is the main page for all of uh, FSA. 
On the left-hand side, which is uh, if you refer to my PowerPoint, there's this browse by subjects, and there's the heading there for farm loan programs. Um, so if you click on that, it will bring you up uh, the page that has all these boxes in it. And the first box, that guide to farm loan programs, that's that plain language guide that will walk anyone through from A to Z, um, the different lo loan types, the application process. And there's basically three decisions we have to make on any application, whether it's micro loan, whether it's a regular operating loan or a farm ownership loan or even a guaranteed loan from farm credit or the bank. The first decision is eligibility. So the type of loan that someone is applying for, do they meet the specific requirement, eligibility requirements for that loan? The second thing is feasibility. So it's looking at the business plan. Do they have enough income projected to be able to make the loan payments back? And thirdly, it's security. Do we have enough security at least one to one, we'd like to get 1.5 to one um, to make the loan. Um, and that, that guide kind of gives you all, all three of those. And then uh, depending upon what type of loan you're looking at, you click uh, on one of those boxes down below, it walks you through it, and our loan application forms are right there at the bottom. So with that, uh, we'll try to stay on time and entertain any questions. Okay, we'll start here in the front. Okay, um, so I was just Okay, when there's where is how would that come into play? Like how could that help us bridge the gap between our farmers that we serve and our residents? Lender certified. Well a couple a couple things. Are we talking about programming that you're doing that could be approved for borrower training? Oh, I didn't ask I think, I didn't I think that's what that is. Yeah. Can you tell me that? Okay. So for <laughs> borrower training, yes. If anyone's doing training courses for um, beginning farmers or, or agriculture producers and um, you would like to have it approved by the agency for to meet borrower training um, requirements, um, then basically there's a, um, I can, I can provide to Eric or someone the information on how to get uh, your, your courses approved by FSA to meet the borrower training requirements. But on the direct loans, we talked about direct and guaranteed, on the direct side, um, we can require our customers or someone who we're loaning money to, to take a course either in financial management or a production area uh, within two years of obtaining their loan as a, as a loan condition. And so then they could be referred to uh, NOFA Say, hey, here's options of you know approved borrower training classes that you could take to meet <coughs> to meet that requirement. But the best thing would probably be for me to, to get you the information. So we'll get you that. Yes. Hold on, enough. I think I want one more back there. Okay. Oh, it's not related. Go ahead. I'm curious about how you evaluate other forms of debt that the borrowers might have, like the basic loan debt or. Okay. The question is, um, how do we evaluate uh, other other debts that borrowers may have? And so we're going to look at we're going to try to look at the entire picture. When we look at feasibility uh, within the amount that you need to take out of the operation to cover family living expenses and your personal debt payments. So student loans would be in there, your credit cards, the car loan. Uh, we want to look at the whole picture and make sure that they are included in there. We would also want to include any non-farm income that you might have um, in there along with projected uh, income from the farm and of course projected expenses. But the idea is to look at, is to look at the, the business plan. And the business plan for us is really key because we are a cash flow lender. Okay, so when we talk about what are you going to sell your sausage for, CJ and I had a conversation on this earlier. You know, those prices that are in that plan, hopefully we need to be real, as realistic as we can because we're loaning you almost a dollar for a dollar, okay? Where farm credit and the banks, are going to, they want a cushion there for risk. Well, we're not going to have that cushion in, in the equity. So our, the cash flow projection for us is key. And that's where we want to make sure we're, we're on the same page. Hey, Vanessa, I'll take your question next. Um, so I answer your question? Okay. For the direct um, farm ownership loan, is there a limit? There depends on the the program. the uh, The maximum uh, loan limit. If you look at the uh, the oh, the question, I forgot to repeat the question. <laughs> um, but if you look at the loan chart um, for a direct farm ownership loan, our maximum loan is three hundred thousand. So, um, and that 
price Yeah. If the purchase price on that for that loan size was five hundred thousand, maybe the owner was going to hold hold a mortgage first, or our credit was going to hold the first mortgage, and then we were going to finance the balance. Okay, that's three hundred thousand for the beginning for the direct down payment uh, farm ownership program. Okay, that that the purchase price of the appraised value is going to be a key piece in seeing whether or not we could do it. Okay. So it could go either way. Yeah. The third one is the one that the purchase price of the appraised value. There's a limit at 45%. That's the maximum we can loan. Or 225, whichever's lower. Yeah. So the, the best thing when you're, I guess, when someone's walking into an FSA office, tell us what you're looking to do. Yeah. Tell us what you're looking to do. Because as you can see, there's a bunch of programs that we offer. And now we got to try to figure out what's the best way, how do we help you get to where you, what your goals are here. So how often is it that someone um, well, we do we do combination direct and guaranteed lending uh, quite a bit, or um, we've taken. I mean, we, we don't necessarily need to take a first uh, mortgage on for a direct farm ownership loan. We can take it behind on a second lien position. Um, how common is it that we use it? Uh, I don't know. I I, I guess. Um, it depends, it depends on the situation as to, you know, the beginning farmer down payment, we're going to use that, we're going to use a, just a regular farm ownership loan. Sometimes we do joint financing, we'll do 50-50 with, with another lender. How does the mechanics of that work? Um, to do joint financing? Um, how do the mechanics work? I mean, someone's going to have to fill out an application process and a form with us, come to one of our offices to, to go through that. But if you're if you're working with a customer and say you you know you're willing to loan a certain number of dollars but you still got a credit need up here, um, well then let's have a conversation. I mean the uh, best thing is probably pick up the phone, you know, make an appointment, come to the office, sit down with the loan officer. Again, you need a good idea of what you're looking to do. And first question is how much money do you need to borrow? What the purpose is why tell me why you're gonna borrow. Because I'm gonna then look at this and say, okay, operating loan. Uh, 12 month payback, seven year payback. I need to kind of fit our programs to what you want to do. Uh, question back. If you're trying to understand what I usually tell people is to go to your local farm credit first or whoever it is, and they'll say, okay, this is something we can do now, they're going to hold it and have to pay for the rest of that. Yes, that's probably very good because that's going to be one of the questions for us too is um, you have to demonstrate or you have to meet the test for credit eligibility on that, which means that the customer coming through our door has to be, make, we have to make sure that they cannot get the credit that they need somewhere else. Now maybe they can get part of it somewhere else, but then they still got a need that maybe we may be able to fill. So that's, that's, that is a good option. Yeah, yeah, there's a test for credit there too that we have to be sure that there's not, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to walk in the door with bank rejection letters. Um, but we have to demonstrate, and here are the reasons why you cannot obtain credit elsewhere. Yes. Okay. There is no minimum amount uh, on the micro loan. Um, the interest rate, the, the one and a quarter percent interest, the interest rate that I quoted you is the fixed rate. Yes, yeah, is the fixed rate. Um, there is a variable rate of five percent, so we're not making many of those. Um, but in, in these days, the interest rates are inverted, okay? But if we were talking back in the late 80s and early 90s, our fixed rate was 13%, our variable rate was 5%. Okay, that's not been, that's not the case now. Our variable rate is, is higher than our fixed rate, so, yes, I don't know. So one, one concern that's come up with loans at a national level is the variation from office to office and officer to officer, how do you establish so how how is FSA trying to figure out that that used to be a two-year minimum savings level and now you're saying that you can have apprentices and such, but how do you establish for the micro loan? For the yeah. micro loan, yes. Yeah. But for both of them, there is that problem that uh, depending on who you went to the broker, there was different things that you want that people think. So Okay. One of the things that I have to address <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> I keep forgetting that. Um how is the agency addressing uh, the experience requirement uh, and for the variation among uh, and, 
and the variation among loan officers. Um, I guess I'd answer that one uh, when when someone's walking in the door, one of the things you know definitely have a resume. Tell us who you are, what education, what training, experience. Um, make sure that's part of the application. Um, there's a form that's in in our packet that you know talks about it with a little block that's probably two inches. Um, but you need to you need to in essence give us a resume and and talk about that. Um, and it, it, for the micro loan, okay, it's it's um, a looser requirement for experience, and that's where we're going to say we're going to look at what experience you've had in running uh, your car repair shop uh, and managing that. Okay, and then working with an apprentice, we may be able to, to meet that because you can meet it from any of three ways: education, training, or farm experience, having lived worked on a, on a farm. Um, for the operating loan, uh, it's uh, for a regular operating loan, not a micro loan. We want to look at one full year of production. Okay, do you have you been through the cycle? Um, for a farm ownership loan, we're going to talk about a mortgage out over up to 40 years. Okay, three years of experience. Um, out of the last 10. And so the reason for that is because if the government is pulling, putting out the, the mortgage there for a long period of time, they want to have some assurance that you kind of know what you're doing uh, before we put a long-term commitment out there on a mortgage. And so that's why the requirements have, are, as you increase from a micro loan, the experience is more, uh, is less, I mean, to an operating loan, it increases, and then for a farm ownership loan for a mortgage where the, it will be out there for a term, that's why the, the experience requirements increase along the way. Did I answer your question? Yeah, that's it. Okay.